So mechanization is really about using tools, implements and machinery in farming. And it covers the whole spectrum from land clearing, land preparation, weeding, plant protection, harvesting, transport, processing, storage. It's about increasing production, about sustainably intensifying production. It also reaches out to food processing to make food more nutritious, higher in quality and also make it to be better preserved. It reduces labor burdens, it improves timeliness, it helps farmers to do early planting, which is so important, specifically in the days of climate threats and uh, climate change. It uh, helps shortening the harvesting period, which is equally important, and it uh, helps in marketing food with transport facilities and in storage. So mechanization is actually a, an enabler to help smallholders to break out of this what is sometimes called vicious cycle of subsistence farming, of, of poverty, to change to a more market-oriented farming, to a more income-oriented farming, to improve their livelihoods. Mechanization should not be confused with tractorization. Tractorization is normally used for large-scale, government-driven, top-down procurement exercises of tractors and machinery into a country without a clear plan of what to do with these machines and with these tractors when they, once they arrived at port in the country. Um, FAO is not advising this. We, from FAO, we, we advise governments to think of a, a strategy for sustainable mechanization where the private sector has its role and the public sector has its role. And with private sector, we actually do not only mean the suppliers of machinery, we also mean the blacksmiths, we mean farmers, who decide to become a service provider for mechanization services. There is a general perception that mechanization is destroying labor in rural areas. However, what labor are we talking about? This is not paid labor. It's not, you don't get a salary at the end of the month with this type of labor. It's family labor where women, elderly and the youth are using tools like these simple hand tools to prepare the land and in order to prepare land by hand for one hectare you need 60 person days to get that done meaning 60 persons standing under the sun for 10 hours per day to prepare a hectare of land for planting. If you have a pair of oxen instead you can do the same job in three to four days. If there would be a mechanization service provider in that region that would have, a, in this case, a direct seeding machine that can do the planting through trash without a big land preparation effort, you can do the same job in two hours. So it's a big difference and that mechanization can make to eliminate jobs that nobody wanted in the first place and to create jobs that are more sophisticated and that will also attract use to stay in the rural area, to become a mechanization service provider, for example. It is actually an, a transformer and it will create better jobs. It will create jobs that may be paid well, that will require training, that will make the rural use to make a decision, yes, I want to stay in my area, I want to become a farmer, I want to become a service provider, I want to become a trainer, I want to become a dealer, and I, I want to contribute to my district to, to where farming is the mostly only income and where I can make my living with a market-oriented farming using modern tools instead of running away from the rural area and seeking employment elsewhere that is not there. A good and well thought through sustainable agricultural mechanization strategy creates perspectives and new attractive jobs, especially for the youth. That means the rural youth can look again at opportunities to make a living and a future at home.